This evening, we are going to answer another one of the questions we've received at Ask the Pastor. And the question is about personal theology. What does that mean and how do we get one? How do I get my own personal theology? So let's just kind of break that down for a moment. Personal meaning you or me, one of us, uh, any of us that are a, a human being, a person. This is their theology. And theology, if we break down that word, theo means God and ology is knowledge of. So this is my knowledge of God, So or your knowledge of God. And that's one of the things that is so wonderful about the United Methodist Church. If you are the kind of person that wants your church, your religion, to tell you everything that you're supposed to think or feel about particular issues, then Methodism is going to be a more difficult fit for you. We agree on the fundamentals. We certainly do have established and written doctrine about things like Jesus Christ being divine and also fully human about the Trinity. And we have some other ones that are very important. So in our law book, our rule book, the Book of Discipline, what you can actually find is um, in the 2016 edition from page 47 to 146, so about 100 pages this much, this is our doctrine. This is what we talk about. And we talk about each person of the Trinity. We talk about our sacraments. We talk about... Uh, our understanding of grace, that's in there. But if you're asking, well, what is the church's position on heaven or what is the church's position on hell? Now we're getting into the realm of personal theology. And if you want to be free to kind of use your own experience and your understanding to develop and have a functional theology that is yours, that might be a little nuanced or even completely different from other people that gather with you in the body of Christ, then Methodism is going to be okay because we leave space for that. But if you're a person that wants to know that everybody in the room with you on Sunday morning thinks and feels the exact same way, Methodism is going to take some work for you to feel comfortable. Me personally, I love that we agree on all the most fundamental and basic things and that there is divergence and multiplicity in the body of Christ. So how do we get our personal theology? How do we get that? So there's something that you might have heard somebody, especially clergy, talk about in your passings in Methodism, and they'll usually talk about the quadrilateral. And they might say the Wesleyan quadrilateral or the Methodist quadrilateral. Uh, all components of the quadrilateral, the four pieces, scripture, tradition, experience, and reason, are all spoken about by John Wesley, one of our foundational members of our theological group that kind of comes together and gives us what we know. And John Wesley did not say the word quadrilateral, and here it is. But also in the, in the scriptures, there's nowhere where it says the Trinity is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are there, and then we've taken that and extrapolated a concise theology. And the same thing happens here for the quadrilateral. So what is a quadrilateral? Well, it could be a perfect square. It could be a rhombus. It could be a trapezoidal shape. And what happens is what you build is based upon how you give precedence to these four things that we are empowered and encouraged to use when we think about God and we think about how we feel about certain things in the church. And so for some people, they might be equal. Uh, that would be pretty rare. Most people are not truly equal in all four of these. Uh, for myself, I put the biggest foundation on Scripture. Um, I have a strong leaning in experience and tradition, and it's not that I don't have reason, but these three are pretty central to me. Scripture is always going to be my biggest piece. I'm very scriptural, and so that's important to me. So however you use them, what, what you're using is essentially Scripture would be just the Bible for us in the United Methodist Church. We don't have extra Scriptures. We have the Old Testament and the New Testament in the, whole, in the Holy Bible. That's what we're using. And so those, that would be our scriptural basis here. Tradition can certainly include some of the writings of early Methodists like John Wesley or Charles Wesley. might include John Wesley's sermons, his notes on the New Testament. It can certainly include the book that I showed to you, the Book of Discipline. It could include other tradition that actually predates United Methodism and the Methodist movement because there was a time where we were a part of the Anglican tradition in the Church of England. And further back than that, we were part of the Catholic tradition. So it could go even further back to that. 
uh, experience is literally that. What is our experience? And the cool thing about experience is it might be me personally or my family group or my local church or the denomination. Experience can cover a wide breadth of experience, not just personal but communal, which is really important for us. How have we experienced this aspect of God or how do we experience this grace. And so those things can come into part of the conversation. But I really appreciate that we are free to use our rational mind. Does it make sense? Is it reasonable for us to ask these things or to have these expectations? All four of them are valid when we start to have conversations about, well, how do you feel about heaven? So if you've had an experience, a near-death experience, or you know somebody that does, or you've done research and you're very compelled by near-death experiences and how they describe heaven, and it fits well with your understanding of scripture and there's tradition certainly around that and you find that to be reasonable, then you might develop a theology about what heaven looks like and how soon you get to go there that is divergent from someone like myself or another Methodist. And that's okay. That's not a problem for us. And that's one of the great things about Methodism is that it's okay for us not to agree on those things because we do agree that whatever our concept of heaven, that Jesus Christ is the way in which we get to experience that, that grace is what liberates us so that we can. Those are the key things. No matter how far we go off and diverge on these topics, we always come back to Christ and God's grace. And it's like coming home. We always have something upon which we are centered and grounded. And that's great. At the end of the day, we all agree on Jesus. And that's a wonderful thing. So hopefully this has given you a little bit of insight into the quadrilateral that you hear about or that I might reference, and it'll help you to continue to develop your own personal theology. I bet you have one and you're not even aware of how much it exists. So next time someone says, well, what do you think about this? And you give an answer, that's your personal theology. And the more that you ground it and support it with experience, reason, tradition, and of course, scripture, the stronger that theological uh, component will be. So we look forward to hearing more of your questions. Thanks so much.